signed with, and they have to translate those into operating documentation of their departments. In addition, it's up to them to write it into the departmental and the individual... GSK, or GlaxoSmithKline, is the largest pharmaceuticals company in the world, and it made $31,000 a minute in 2006. The name is the result of more than half a century of mergers that have involved New Zealand's Glaxo, Wellcome in the UK, Beecham's in Britain, the US's Smith & Klein companies, as well as a host of others. As it made its $31,000 a minute, the HIV infected of the poor world were facing waits of 20 years for new drugs, as they were punished by lobbied lawmakers in Washington for attempting to make cheaper generic versions of GK medicines. GSK is currently lobbying for Republican candidate John McCain. Whilst much criticism of GSK is centered on animal rights testing, this film focuses on elements that may truly affect the company's future earnings. It was four years ago that the US Internal Revenue levied the largest back tax claim in history. GSK had to pay eight billion dollars preach that there has to be quality, but if you don't provide a mechanism, a basis for people to do that, it's going to be very difficult for them to accomplish what you want them to accomplish. This system gives them the basis so that everybody can start with that foundation. It's grown out of best practice that we've seen in operation around various Glaxo Welcome companies. Some of our companies out there have already taken the principles, they've applied it, and they're seeing some big benefits from it. This came after GSK was fined $90 million for overcharging the US government for drugs. The cuttings file on GSK is littered with scandals associated with its abuse of government funding from using orphans to test AIDS drugs to evade laws on experimentation to massive tax dodges. The biggest criticism of the company concerns AIDS which continues to devastate swathes of the world. GSK failed to beat off South African President Thabo Mbeke's attempt to ingeniously use WTO rules to allow cheaper versions of GSK drugs into his country. It was a big fight that suggested to many commentators that GSK was more interested in massive salaries for its board than making a fair profit out of saving the lives of millions. Oxfam in particular took the case up. It was in Italy that authorities publicized what is well known about GSK that it actively bribes doctors and health services to use its drugs. In just a two-year period, Italian police said that GSK's bribes totaled more than a quarter of a billion dollars. Their investigation, they claimed, saved the Italian government's health budget more than half a billion. GSK issued warnings to its representatives as soon as filmmaker Michael Moore announced he intended to investigate the U.S. healthcare system. We, we live in a time where we have a man sending us to war. At the time, there were growing concerns over its drug Paxil, which the British government concluded was being administered to millions of children, whilst GSK knew that it may have no beneficial effect on them, indeed may harm them. A 1998 GSK memo said, the company must manage the dissemination of data in order to minimize any potential negative commercial impact. That memo aided the case which GSK settled with New York now Governor Elliot Spitzer. GSK paid two and a half million dollars to settle. The company paid 150 million dollars to settle fraud allegations over inflating prices of Zorfran and Kutril, nausea drugs. It admitted no wrongdoing whilst the US Justice Department argued that GSK charged private providers lower prices for drugs so that they could pocket the difference. In May of 2007, GSK shares were hit by proof of increased heart risks associated with its new drug of Andia. For the future, GSK's share price may well be affected by boycotts of its products. To date, Canada, India and a host of groups in the United States have campaigned for boycotts of GSK medicines. But so far, it has been controversy over drugs such as Paxil, Siroxat, and AZT that have pushed its stock price down. It is alleged, for instance, that GSK is trying to protect its patent for AZT 
by slowing the release of a more powerful and less toxic AIDS drug, 1592. Perhaps the best way to look at a company that has settled so many lawsuits that have affected so many millions of people is to look at who works there. CEO Jean-Pierre Garnier, who has come under fire for massive salary packages whilst refusing to lower prices for life-saving drugs in Africa, is also on the board of the company that makes Black Hawk helicopter gunships. He benefits twice from the war in Iraq. His chief finance officer was John Coombe, who whilst at a company that had the biggest problems with US tax authorities in history, was a member of the code committee of the UK takeover panel. Its CFO now, Julian Heslop, was an auditor at Stoy Hayward, implicated in many financial scandals, including Polly Peck and the recent savings scam in Britain, Fairpack. Paul Allaire, responsible for salaries, was chairman of Xerox, where he sold $16 million of stock options before the company was found to have used accounting tricks to defraud investors. That investigation by the US SEC. Even financial analysts now look poorly on the company, particularly as it is rushed to improve corporate governance in the face of so many claims that will hit its insurers hard. For the moment, the UK Serious Fraud Office has recently launched their inquiry into GSK's involvement in Iraq, where it is alleged it aided the Saddam Hussein regime. Welcome to Real Global News, the daily newscast covering international stories and perspectives ignored by others. 